Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Sketch Monkey here. I'm back here at beautiful Winslow BMW in Colorado Springs to have a look at a uh, coupe SUV today. But this is not your average coupe SUV. This is of course the 2023 BMW X4 M competition. So what we're gonna do in this video is have a look at this front end design with the extended shadow line package on this beautiful blue color. We're gonna have a look at the side view and then we're going to talk about this rear end. I'm going to let you know exactly what I think about it before we jump into the interior. And last but not least, we're going to take this for a drive. Let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of the 2023 BMW X4 M competition. You have a 3-liter turbo inline 6 putting out 473 horsepower and 457 pound-feet of torque connected to an 8-speed automatic transmission. All-wheel drive, 0 to 60, takes 3.2 seconds. Fuel economy comes in at 15 city, 20 highway. And the price for this is $91,400. Starting with the front-end design of the BMW X4, there's not really a lot of differences here from the X3, which I think looks better than the X4, specifically, of course, in the rear end. But this marina blue metallic paint in the sunshine just looks fantastic with this extended shadow line uh, package, which means that all the graphic features in the front end and the housing for the headlights are all blacked out. You can see the kidneys up here being pretty traditionally styled for BMWs today. Instead of having them be vertical, they now sit in a pretty normal traditional position. And then we have these uh, daytime run lights right here, which look, in my opinion, a little bit static because they have the same thickness going around them and they also have this uh, texture on top of it so it doesn't feel like a solid LED piece but they are very thick and you can see the glass if you look at this from a side view you can't see that it's on or off very cool little feature looking up top on the hood here we have some very nice line flow going on in the hood with these two big main character lines in the middle and then you have this side line going in swooping in and you also have a line starting from the corner right here of the grill and cutting into the hood and fades in this area pretty sweet further down on this design this is where it gets a little too complex for me i think with the top part we have very horizontal layout on the top section with the graphics of the headlights in combination with the blacked out the grill in the middle you also have the front mounting camera located right here in between the kidneys but further down everything is pointing upwards down here i'm not sure why they did it like that i want to have it be a little bit more horizontal in the lower section as well to have it be in line with this top part and then of course when we do that we're going to have a much clearer separation with the bumper in the front end to separate the top half of the graphics from the lower section which view is my favorite view of the x4 i think you know the answer already if you watch some of my previous videos it's going to be the front end design i really like what's going on here because we do still have a rather traditional layout for bmw with this aggressive feeling the top end and all the functionality in the lower section have a look at this every single piece in the lower section and the grill everything you see is open there is no fake vents in the front end of the x4m competition now coming around to the side view of the bmw xm competition this is where i think all these suv coupes proportionally it doesn't really look right to me it never did and it doesn't really do that in this bmw x4 either because i think it's such a heavy design volume wise in the front end this section here this hood this proper suv section that we have in the front and then in the back it goes down and all this volume disappears that's exactly the volume that we have in the x3 and that's why i think proportionally i would every single time go for the normal SUV over the coupe SUV version of whatever car we're talking about. But in this case, marina blue again in the sunshine looking fantastic. We do have a sharp shoulder line cutting through right here into the corner of the headlights looking nice. We also have this line here at the bottom carving out some mass but this being the m competition there is no hard there is no plastic here everything is body color which i think adds to the sportiness of this car and it also plants the car visually on the ground now wheel and tire setup we don't have a staggered setup here which is pretty surprising because new bmw m cars usually have this 20 in the front 21 in the rear but in this case we have 21s all around and i do like this design here being extended shadow line that means that this is blacked out we have gloss black wheels 
I think it kind of works on this car because this marina blue is a, a pretty dark blue color and everything else around the car is also blacked out. So 21 inch blacked out wheels, it kind of works on this car. We have 265 tires in the rear and 255 millimeter wide tires in the front end. Pretty weird proportions there. I was expe expecting this to be a lot wider, maybe 285s and 255s, but they're almost similar size. Now, I know that I'm in the minority when it comes to not really liking these coupe, coupe SUVs because they are very, very popular and people are buying these in big numbers. I, I'm not sure if they sell better than the X3, but they are up there when it comes to sales. Further down here, we do have this X. M4 graphic that is not functional, but I think it adds something to the design because it has a connection to this lower section that you have right here. So I would not want to change this, maybe have it be hollow and add some functionality to this would be nice. Then you have the camera mounted right here in the side mirror with the LED uh, turn signal. And of course you do have this M style side mirror with the little fin here that some people don't really like, but I think it adds something to the design. And moving further back, we do have this sloping roof line, as you can see, being part of what makes this an X4 and separates it from the X3. So coming around to the three-quarter rear view, we do have a very sloping top part here, obviously, with this black spoiler being part of the M competition package, being all blacked out, extended shadow line package. Further down, we do have these very nice looking dynamic taillights and have a look at the thickness of the side LED here. It looks very juicy, this part, then goes into a much thinner piece and coming back a little thicker at the very end. So we have some dynamics in the key graphics of the rear end, which I really like. And also in the rear end, we do have this big BMW logo. We don't have the camera mounted right here. Instead, the camera is all the way down here, right above the license plate. Now, looking at these sides at the bottom of the bumper, we do have this black piece coming up here, but I do like what BMW does better than Mercedes. Mercedes has this cut in here, which sometimes is functional, sometimes it's not. In this case, we still have this cut, but they added a reflector light here, so it has a function to it and it's not just a random cut in the body. It looks pretty aggressive this blacked out piece that we have going here, almost like a maze in the lower section, but it houses the big quad tailpipes that is a necessity if you're gonna get an M competition. It needs to have quad tailpipes round like this and I love the fact that they're blacked out with the rest of the body. And we have a pretty subtle diffuser in the middle, just adding a touch of sportiness to the centerpiece of the rear diffuser. Looking at the X4M competition from a straight rear view like you're doing right now, here again, I, I don't think this looks as planted as the straight rear view of an X3 because of the lack of volumes here. And I also think it has to do with the tires in this case. They're only 265 millimeter wide in the rear end. It is all wheel drive, so it doesn't necessarily have to have super beefy rear tires. But the plantedness of this car, it lacks this BMW solid sumo stance that I'm used to seeing from BMWs. And that goes for pretty much every single Coupe S. SUV. Welcome to the beautiful interior of the BMW 2023 model year X4M competition. So let's fire this up. Let's have a look at what's going on here. Put it in. Let's see what we got. Is it in comfort? As quiet as possible, I hope. Uh, there we go. Turn off the uh, exhaust pipes. So what do we have here? Look at this. This is a 2023 model, but we still have the nice housing for the gauge cluster and we do have the 12.3 inch infotainment screen, 12.3 inch uh, gauge cluster separately. And that I think looks so much better than the new iDrive 8 systems. Uh, I don't think this is gonna last very long, so we might as well appreciate it while we still have it. So moving up top here, this is the very uh, common integration of the infotainment screen like we have in a lot of BMWs these days. Very easy to use and I do like that in this setting right here, in the iDrive, I believe this is the iDrive 7 setting that we have separate like this, we don't have everything inside of the infotainment screen. There's no way you can change the climate setting in here. Instead, it's all down here in physical buttons. But let's see what we have here. We have vehicle status, we can go into that. 
we can check the tire pressure, oil level, we have different driver profiles, M menu, which is my favorite one. You can configure these M buttons in here. You have the head up display, you can change that, adjust the brightness, height and rotation for it. So you have a bunch of different things here. And if you, go, you wanna go into the map, you can have a full screen map, of course, taking up pretty much the entire 12.3 inches. Looking pretty good. I would again, probably just use Apple CarPlay if this was my car. So I don't really care necessarily about the uh, nav systems that we have in modern cars when they are equipped with the uh, Apple CarPlay. Further down, we do have some carbon fiber here. This is some proper carbon fiber, this being the M competition. You wanna have some of that inside here. And we definitely have it around the vents. Looking at the vents themselves, very easy to adjust, so much easier than the new BMW 7 Series, which has some weird knobs down here on the dash that you have to fill around with to figure out where the air is gonna come out from. You can't see the slots either. Here you can see everything. You have a big, massive flap here to adjust whatever you want. Climate control settings, you do have those down here. And you also have the button for the heated seat in three different settings. And just simple toggles for the temperature and the fan speed in the middle, looking great. Further down, you have the controls for the radio settings. In the center console here, you do have the X4M competition in black here. It looks very good to have this badge, a proper badge with the lettering being separated, sitting on top of this plastic piece, looking nice. Underneath here, you do have the wireless charging underneath this uh, slider, and you also have the two cup holders here and a regular USB. Coming into this control panel in the center, this is what you see in pretty much every new BMW today. And it's a great system when we have the iDrive 8 system, in my opinion. You do have the, of course, the gear shifter being with the M stamped on top of it, and you also have the M stitching going around it. You can put it in reverse, put it in, uh, let's check out the cameras. We do have the uh, reverse camera, obviously, and you also have the 360 camera with some additional camera options if you just click on the cameras that are visible here is gonna show exactly where that camera is pointing to the sides of the car looking pretty nice you obviously also have a trajectory line for the steering wheel when you're reversing further down additional buttons down here are you have the traction control control the camera button parking sensors automatic shut off for the engine you have the start button being in red and you have the drive modes and the exhaust button on the side and you also have this toggle right here so if you want to use this one you can do that or if you want to use a touchscreen you can do that it's completely up to you because bmw they're nice they're giving you a couple of options you also have the buttons up here to quickly go to the home button you just click the home button or the back button and so on you get the point you also have hill descent control here and the parking brake located right behind the gear selector have a look at this leather that we have in here. This is probably the spec that I would go, not for the X4, but I would probably get the X3 for reasons that I've already explained design-wise. I would get this Marina Bay blue exterior. I think it's a gorgeous color. And then you have this nice brown leather on the interior, giving it this beach vibe. You have the sand beach, and then you have the ocean blue on the exterior. Very nicely done by BMW. And these seats, they don't have all that carbon fiber stuff that we have in some M cars. These still look very elegant and classy, luxurious, but at the same time, extremely sporty design of this because you have the bolstering up here for your shoulders, and then you have the big bolstering right here on the side and the diamond stitching right in the middle with the M logo in the headrest, looking beautiful. Over to the doors, we do have this X stamped into the top part of the door in addition to some carbon fiber up there with the silver trim, this brown leather coming back in the door and the handle itself with some hard plastic on the bottom section. Very functional and stylistic door design if I say so myself. Moving on to the steering wheel, and I've seen this specific wheel in a lot of M cars recently. Nothing wrong with that because it is a fantastic steering wheel. It has very thick feeling to it. It's thick exactly where you want it to be thick. You have the M1, M2 buttons up here, configurable, like I showed you in the infotainment screen, and you have the pedals. This being an XM competition though, I really want the pedals to be carbon fiber. Here we have some plastic uh, pedals that are not very long, but you can clearly see them and they're attached to the steering wheel. It would be nice to have something special for the competition package to have these be longer and in carbon fiber. But they do have this typical uh, BMW tight click to them. 
On the right side of the steering wheel, you do have the controls for the voice command and the radio settings. On the left side, you have all the buttons for the cruise control and you have the heated steering wheel in a typical BMW fashion, being a single little island button down here, all lonely at the third spoke in the bottom with the M logo at the very bottom and the M stitching as I talked about. Looking at this gauge cluster though, and again, this gauge cluster integration, beautifully done. You do have a nice soft touch cap to it and it looks fantastic with these graphics. Just a beautiful combination with the gauge cluster and the infotainment screen like we used to have just a few years ago in BMWs. But unfortunately, as you know, this type of styling is going away for BMW. On the left side of the steering wheel, you do have a vent and you have the controls for the light settings. And you also have a small little compartment here for, I would say, you could fit probably five markers in there. Looking up top, you do have a big panoramic sunroof that goes almost all the way back to the uh, passenger seats. And you can open the glass up if you want that, or if you just want to have some uh, brighter interior, you can just open up this fab fabric piece and keep the rest closed. Very nice. Last but not least, what about the glove box? Yes, we do have a proper glove box in this car. Now I can also show you the sticker. So here you have the sticker. If you want to have that to look at and freeze the frame, you can do that right now. With that said, let's jump into the back seat and check that out. All right, so jumping in to the back seat of the X4 M Competition. And this, as you know, being more of a coupe style, I still have a plenty of headroom in here, but the visibility is blocked a little bit by the curvature of the interior of the ceiling. But other than that, it's pretty fine. It's almost a little tight back here. I'm 6'1", I'm sitting behind my own driving position right now, but I still have plenty of space if I just move my legs out a little bit. In the middle section, you do have the controls for the third zone climate control settings down here, and you have two USB-Cs. And if you fold this center armrest down, you are going to find yourself two cup holders. Let's do it, guys. Let's set off in the 2023 BMW X4M competition. We have an inline six twin turbo, three liter under the hood, 473 horsepower, zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. So let's put it in Sport Plus, of course, in everything. Sport Plus for the steering chassis engine and eight speed automatic. love the noise it's so stiff the tiniest little adjustment to the steering wheel and you're gonna see it in the direction of where the car moves Pro that, that's proper BMW handling right there so let's put it in manual as well why not and up the shift speed to top Oh, it's so tight. It's like it's flexing its muscle non-stop. It's tight all the time. I love that feeling. That's one of these feelings that you rarely get in any other cars than BMWs. That's what BMW does so well are those uh, that specific feeling that you have. Oh, yes. I always love jumping back in a BMW M car. It doesn't matter what the package is, if it's an SUV, if it's a coupe, whatever. They all handle incredibly well. Even the big X5M just feels fantastic to drive. And this is definitely no different. It's just a joy to drive this thing. And I, that's the thing, even SUVs these days can be very, very fun to drive. Even if the center of gravity sits so much higher than in a uh, you know, lower, lower sitting sedan or a coupe, they're still so tight to drive these things, these a M cars. And I do appreciate this gauge cluster so much more than, you know, the iDrive 8 system handling is fantastic. Oh, that noise.
noise. I don't care that it's pumped in. I don't care anymore if they enhance the sound a little bit by pumping it in. It, it just doesn't bother me, it just sounds so good. So how do we sum this X4M competition up? Well, you know me when it comes to these uh, SUV coupés. I, the performance of this X4, 2023 X4M competition is just insane. 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds, seconds. It's just nuts. And when you have it in these uh, Sport Plus settings with the most aggressive shifts, it feels like a sports car. It feels almost like an M4 or M3. It's just in the corners we can feel the center of gravity just a little bit, uh, sitting a little bit higher than uh, than you used to in those other cars. But other than that, it's just a pure performance machine. However, when it comes to the styling, there is no doubt which one I would pick. I would definitely go for the X3. M competition in this case because I just love I just love the styling more than I do in this uh, X4 M competition. The proportions they look better in the X3 in my opinion, but I do know that a lot of people love these cars and this one is probably going to sell this quick. If you're interested in this car, make sure you visit Winslow BMW. Thank you so much to them for providing uh, this vehicle for me to review for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.